and ain't no wannabes here With some not so nice advice for your writing career To be clear, no punches will be pulled But the punch may be spiked How they like before they get on the mic To my left we got the mighty Mer Lafferty And if I piss her off, believe me, she'll come after me And her co-host met Evan Wallace On the right, yes she may be half as hype But she can take him in a fight So settle in folks, buckle in and boot up Time to meddle in a way to make your writer shut up It's hard work, but the perk is that it's fun and exciting Facebook will still be there when you're done writing Ditch Diggers! Ditch Diggers! Coming to you live from the Ditch Diggers Outdoor Garden uh, We have Mer Lafferty and Ursula Vernon The Ditch Diggers of the moment uh, Standing in for Matt How are you Ursula? I am good-ish. This book is kicking my ass, but other than that, I'm great. It's spring. Things are growing. How yes. can I not be good? How are you, Mur? I'm doing okay. I'm floating in the void. Uh, it is not sp- I, well. It's spring here. We live very close together, but uh, uh, it's it's it's. I, I'm okay. I um, increased my ADHD dosage, which is good for focus, but I'm still feeling a little um, well absent-minded professor kind of thing. Um, I'm happy with what I just wrote, but then I'm running around trying to get the stream together. Ah, uh, and so it's, um, yeah, little things. I got a big long list of things to do that I didn't do before. It can still be hard when you're hyper focused on a thing to then make the switch. Yes. To this other thing that you need to focus on, but yeah. Yes, indeed. Um, yes, we had, uh, we talked beforehand about how writing is right having a good writing day is very important there's fewer things le- less important and the only two things more important are um going to the bathroom and picking someone up from surgery yes you, you should not neglect either of those things for writing yes exactly i mean probably there's some other things somewhere but i couldn't think of them at the time yeah those are the two things that came to mind so they are um hard and fast chisel and stone the rules Yes, don't don't write so hard that you forget to go to the bathroom. Or forget to pick up somebody from surgery. Yes. Anyway, um it it's it's a new season of Ditch Diggers. i uh we're still kind of finding our feet. We're live on Twitch, I should say. We're gonna be live on Twitch every Monday at noon Eastern time. I'm gonna be doing Matt and then a guest and then another Matt and then another guest. So we'll have Ursula and then we'll have uh, Cameron Hurley will be the last Monday of the month and uh, Alistair Stewart will be next month. So gotta have some rotating guest hosts and thank you very much for standing in for Matt, Ursula. You have a lot of things going on now. Um, They're big shoes to fill, but uh, you know, I'll, I'll do my best. Yes. Um, but first, congratulations on your Hugo nomination. Oh, yes. Uh, yeah, uh, for best series for the, the World of the White Rat. I am, I am very flattered that uh, so many of you nominated it and, uh, and uh, wrote the name coherently because I'm very bad about, you know, publicizing what I'm calling the series or anything. So Yes. People are saying congrats in chat. Ursula is not looking at chat, by the way. So yeah, I need I, to on a different thing. But thank you, uh, you Mur, You got nominated for a thing, right? Yes, yes. Escape Pod, uh, which also Premi is uh, Premi in chat, also on the team, uh, was nominated for uh, best semi prosine, and uh, Divya and I are nominated for uh, best editors set short form. So that well was deserved. shocking. Um, very shocking. Only to you. <laughs> Escape Pod is a good pod, yes. Yes, and you and Davy are good editors. Thank you. Thank you. But unfortunately, Divi is gone, and um, my new partner, Valerie, and I are kind of... We're doing great. Really. <laughs> That should have sounded more convincing. Yeah, it should have sounded more convincing. Um, no, I just, I, I, I knew, you know, you know, I, I knew how much I relied on Divya's uh, clear thinking and organization, and uh, Valerie is is Divya chose Valerie for her clear thinking and organization as well as being awesome and editor alike and stuff. But um, 
I miss Divya still. It, it, it's it's hard to adjust to to new coworkers, yeah. even when they're fabulous new coworkers. You know, you still gotta gotta get all the, the groove together. Yeah, yeah. Um. So yeah, I I we're nominated for two Hugo's. That's exciting. We'll be going to Chicago. Um, you will be I, too, right? No, I'm probably not doing Chicago, which what? means I'm gonna need to send you with a uh, acceptance speech. On the off chance I win. What? You're not going to Chicago? I have a bunch of conventions, like, all along there, and I needed a, a month that I wasn't. Mm. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. It's fine. It's fine, and I won't win, so you probably won't have to get up and talk about, you know, well, probably not slime molds. No, you've whatever. done that. Yeah. Potatoes? Whatever uses my my imagination this time. No, you're gonna I, make me get up and talk about hyenas, aren't you? Oh God, that would be the most cruel and uh, like. And it would guarantee you'd win too. Just because you really don't want to give that speech. Oh. Yeah. Well, I was asked to. Uh, ex the first time I was asked to accept a Hugo. Um, I won't say who it was, but if you know people well in science fiction, you could probably guess. Um, I was asked to give the uh, speech in Klingon. <laughs> and uh, it, it, it was a relief. <laughs> not to have not, to do to it. To not win, yes. <laughs> um, I did not know what I was going to do. I was probably go up and say... A phonetic... Like, yeah, he he did give me phonetics. Um, I was thinking I might just go and go up and like yell the Klingon I knew from college, um, which I think was like. Now I can't even remember what it means. I just remember what it was. But uh, my reading a speech on hyenas would be worth the price of admission. Thank you, Lee. <laughs> Premie is cackling. Yes. Um, anyway, so I, I'm sorry. This is news to me. I'm very sad, but uh, I, I understand the need for a break. And I, I admire your self, uh, self-care, self self-control stuff. I, I mean, it's less self-control and more. I got a thing in July. I got a thing in August. I got a thing in October. I got a thing in November. Uh, and yeah. 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 Besides, this means I can join you at SmodderCon. That's true. That's true. That'll be that'll be awesome. Um, I was gonna say something else. Dang it! Somebody uh, Christian talking about Fraser in chat brings to mind Fraser episode where Fraser asked a Jewish coworker to help him write a speech for son's bar mitzvah, and the coworker gives him a speech in Klingon instead. All right. Um. Okay. Well, I I just be. Available Sunday night for lots and lots of texts, if you don't mind. Oh, no problem, no problem. I I I shall watch the stream and and lift a glass and have my phone fully charged. Okay, okay, good. Anyway, and I promise my the acceptance speech will be written in English. Thank you, thank you. But yes. Ditch digging. Yes, we are going to ditch dig. We were talking about um, we were talking about what we were going to talk about a little while ago, and yes. uh, Ursula, well, you you say what happened? You you received an email. I probably received the same email. I just haven't read yes. it yet. Uh, and the uh, the uh, this is no no shade on the the panel. The moderator had sent out the list of questions they wanted to ask, which some moderators do, which great. And one directed at me specifically was, what is selling right now? And should <laughs> writers write to that market? And this was um, an odd question to direct to me. Uh, I'm sure they meant well. I, I appreciate the thought. But A, I have no idea. I'm not an agent. You know, I, I can tell you what books I have sold. But that only means that those are that one book sold and most of the ones I'm working on sold, you know, two years ago. Yeah. And 
if you try to write to the market of what is selling now because you're like hanging around agents or something and they're like, yeah, X is hot right now. Well, if you try to write X, uh, unless you can turn the book around in, in a month, X will no longer be hot by the time your book is done yeah. or the market will be glutted with X. And if you're me who has, you know, a certain perversity, uh, not to be confused with perversion, but if somebody told me this is the book that is selling, you should write this, I would immediately be driven to write anything else on earth. Yeah. Like if you told me, okay, the market really wants uh, grim, dark YA dystopia, I would either give you a complete send up of the genre where, or I would, you know, be like, I'm writing a cozy whodunit. You'd write a garden cozy whodunit with old people. Yes. Yeah. That yeah. sounds about the opposite of a YA grim dark dystopia. Probably, yes. Yeah. Yeah, the writing to the market thing is is tough. Um, as Premi says, do people know anything about publishing timelines? Um, I don't think a lot of people do. I, I, I don't know how often yeah. you talk about that on, on Ditch Diggers. Um, well, we can talk about it now um yeah it's essentially you when you sell a book they usually give you six more you six more months to write it unless you sell on proposal but uh if you if you give them a book that they want to write that they want to publish they'll give you about six months to edit it and then they'll need time to design the cover the time to talk to sales and marketing and figure out where it fits in the schedule um, time to time after you turn in the final draft to send to the um uh to send to reviewers so and copy editors and whatnot yeah and, and well yeah copy editors but once you have like a good close to final time uh, copy you still need six months after that at the least to send to reviewers and blurbers and stuff like that. And then throw in a pandemic and you've missed a couple of deadlines and they can't count on when you'll actually turn it in and when to schedule all that other stuff out. And you've got like 18 months to two years kind of thing going on. And uh, even if you don't miss the deadline, uh, your editor may suddenly be trapped at home with uh, four small children, as happened to me at one point. And that is why the book contract, uh, they literally took a year to get back to me on wow. a book once. And I don't begrudge her at all because it was, I mean, she was trapped at home during the pandemic with four small children, like three of them under five, and one of them I think was six. Oh my God. And, uh, and one of them was a newborn. So, oh you know, God. it was like, yeah, you take as long as you need. You know, I, this is why I have a pen name and write for adults too, because yeah, what can you do? Uh, yeah. and, uh, there was also a thing at least early in the pandemic where they were, because no one knew how long anything was taking, they were pushing books out. So for example, I got, uh, I was getting blurbs on Nettle and Bone in 2020. Wow. When Nettle and Bone's coming and, out in July? Uh, uh, no, it's coming out at the end of this month. Oh, the end of this month. What's coming out in July? Yeah. The one with the scary uh, what, rabbit on the cover? The scary rabbit one, yes. What okay. Moves the Dead. Right. Okay. Yeah. So it's, uh, and yeah, okay, that was a particularly long stretch for uh, uh, Nettle and Bone, but uh, because, you know, they were originally going to do it like uh, uh, middle of last year, and then they were all, okay, if we push it out to January... Maybe the pandemic will be, oh, okay, I guess it won't. All right, how about April? And we'll just have it firm in April because apparently this is life now. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, it's publishing timelines uh, for traditional publishing are very long. Yeah. Or can be. And sometimes it's if you, we've got you a slot in the markets or uh, in the schedule. And if you can't deliver the book on time, you sort of lose your, your place. It, it, it's like planes taking off at an airport. If you miss your, your, your window, uh, you have to get back it. They have to find another place to put you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
Yeah. So, yeah. That's the unfortunate thing. So, uh, but there is something we can do aside from that, which is, uh, and you're you're into the self-publishing thing. So oh, yeah. what if you look at what's selling right now in self-publishing? Um, would you, how, how likely would it be to write to that market? Uh, it would be different just because, well, first of all, that would require doing a, a level of market research that uh, is difficult for me, I suppose. Um, it's so I'm, funny because you do so many other things to self-publish a quality book. It's yeah, not like you're just, you know, putting out a, a black or white cover with some text and then, you know, the, the, the easiest export to EPUB option in Microsoft Word. You know, you, you have good layout and you have copy editors and you have cover design. Well, you do your cover design, but that's because you're just multi-talented and I don't hate you for that at all. Well, actually, the thing with cover design is one of the things where I do market research, because if I know the genre, I go look at what the other covers uh, in my genre are to see, okay, what do the books that are selling look like? Interesting. I don't know what necessarily what's written in them because I can really only write the books I write. Like I, uh, if if you told me that um, Shapeshifter Erotica is selling really well, okay, and apparently Shapeshifter Erotica was selling really well for a while. I don't know if it still is. Yeah, uh, it we might missed our window. Perennial favorite. Uh, any book I wrote would still be the Ursula Vernon shapeshifter erotica book. Like, it would still sound like me. The sex would still be awkward. You know, it uh, it would still probably be funny, and there would be at least one really creepy thing happening in it. Right. Uh, but, so I'm not going to go read, like, 20 shapeshifter erotica books and be like, this is what the market wants. I will write a book like that. Uh yeah. Said, okay, well, that might be kind of interesting, I suppose, but I, I'd probably just get really bored with it after a while. But I That's will, right. had I written a Shapeshifter Erotica book, I would go look at the covers yeah. and be like, okay, this, 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 and this, and uh, stock photo, stock photo. Uh, and, and with Shapeshifter Erotica, at least, there is a very specific cover design, uh, which... Uh, you know, it is like the dude probably without a shirt, the animal in the background photo sort of superimposed over a landscape. And uh, yeah. What if and, you take a, a, a like a Regency um, classic and just like put a werewolf instead of a rake? Uh, like, uh, like. Bridgerton? Uh, I I've never actually read for your Neither did I. I've just seen it everywhere. Actually, that's can, does can, can I werewolf? go to huh? Does Does Bridgerton have werewolves? No, Bridgerton has Regency romance. Oh yeah, yeah. I figured that much, but yeah. I figured it could also have a werewolf. I mean, it I'm could. Not it could. I don't actually. I haven't seen it or read it either, so I could be completely wrong. Maybe there are werewolves, and the sex is so good that's all people talk about, and they don't talk about the werewolves. But now I want to write the werewolf and the rake. But that would mean I would have to know Regency romances, and still I bounce off that pretty hard. I love Regency romances. I Someday know. I want to write a a Regency romance, but uh, being me, you know, it's gonna have potatoes better. and something strange and something <laughs> disgusting. Yeah, I I can't get away from speculative fiction, even you know, with writing it because sooner or later I'm just like, okay, but what if on top of all of this? there were horrible skin-stealing monsters in the basement. Yeah, yeah. I, I have intended officially to do uh, an anthropomorphic version, because I could probably do it if the uh, if the characters were, like, all uh, uh, dogs or wolves or, or chickens or whatever, then it would be just weird enough that I could, I could go. And uh, if I was going to do that, in fact, I had already worked out, I was going to call it Regency Bitch, and it would be all dogs... And it would be a send up of the Georgette Hare Regency Buck. And uh, it would sell five copies, probably mostly to the people currently in the chat. <laughs> I was sitting here watching the chat, waiting to see it explode with, would buy now, take my money. <laughs> 
We got Where Potatoes, Regency Romance, yes, The Spinster and the Slime Mold, and then <laughs> discussing whether uh, Mary Robinette Kowal's books had uh, non-humans or werewolves. Hello, kids are asleep. Sorry I missed you coming in. Lovely to see you. Um, and Preemie had to go, but Preemie says, uh, everyone go by What Moves the Dead. It is very, very, very good. So, oh, thank you, Preemie. Yes, thank you, Preemie. Um, so I was just thinking um, about what's selling now, and I realized I don't even have to look at the top sellers because they're all going to be stuff that's gone to film or TV, and people want to read those books now. It's going to be at least one classic old white guy, maybe dead, maybe not dead, Tolkien, Martin, Asimov, some one of those is going to be in the top 20. And probably a Harry Potter book. Yeah, that, that's where I was going next. So you can't write to that market. It's impossible. Yeah. Unfortunately. You, you, yeah. It's... And it's, you know, how long does it take you to write a book kind of thing? Uh, in, in the very, like, highly specific... Uh, even if you're writing short stories, if you are writing seasonal, you know, like, okay, say a magazine has a call for Halloween stories, they're usually buying the Halloween stories in what, you know? Spring. April? Yeah. So either you learn to write a Halloween story, you know, uh, a quarter ahead, or you wait a year. I keep, wanting to write, I keep wanting to write a Christmas romance, but I'm only inspired at Christmas, so... Yeah, That's... so you, you'd have to, like, sit on it for a year. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Um, so, again... But I would say, furthermore, writers have no idea what's selling. Agents no. know what's selling. Uh, and, like, editors know what they're buying, presumably. But that just because that is what... It, what is selling is what is selling to the editors... Uh, what is selling to the readers is, I mean, if editors could predict that every time, publishing would be a very different industry. Yes. Yes, exactly. I mean, and even, even like controversial books, I remember in my little world of Twitter, and I, I follow a lot of publishing Twitter, um, American Dirt was a horrific, uh, what's the word? Damn it. Appropriating? Thank you. Appropriating piece of shit. And yet, it it was a bestseller. It was highly publicized. It The big Target... I always look to see what books are in Target because it, when you can get books into Target and grocery store and it's like their impulse buys, that is when you know you're making money. Yep. And I was so pissed that it's like, I think my Star Wars book was the one Star Wars book that did not show up in my fucking Target. I Aww. just like, I'm like, I can go to Target and I can sign some books. Let's do that. Oh, fuck. Well, and, and there's a, uh, uh, what is selling, uh, well, movie tie-ins, but mm -hmm. that was, you, you can't just sit down and write a movie tie-in and yeah. then walk up to Lucasfilm or Disney now and be like, hi. I've written you a tie-in book for that uh, that movie. Also, if you get uh, if you get royalties, they're gonna be tiny, and yeah. some some might say even tiny is good. No, it can be tiny. Um, I solo is the biggest book, the m book with the most numbers I've ever sold, and I have not earned out. I've earned out all my other books. Yeah. It's just like the the it's it's almost an insult to get my royalty statements and go, how many did I sell? How much more do I have to make on my advance? Wow. So it's uh yeah. So market tie and sell, but that does not go to the author. No. Yeah. Um Oh god. Kids are asleep says I literally saw people buy multiple copies of American Dirt, quote unquote, to support the poor attacked author. Yes, Disney is famous for underpaying authors. Thank you, Kit Favo. Yeah. Falbo. It's not just Disney though. Like I mean no. Disney, yes, but uh but none of the the uh the media tie-in novels uh tend to 
they're they're more like I think a paycheck than like an investment in future royalties. Yeah. Yeah, pretty much. Um Yeah, so looking at the market doesn't really do a lot. I think I went on a tangent and were we done talking about self publishing? Because if you look Oh oh no, no. I'm very uh, sorry. No, no. Uh, I mean, uh, I can keep talking about self-publishing. That's well, why. I was just curious. Like, if you do look at, I, I want to see if I can find it on Amazon on my phone. Um, the top. Do they have? Do they separate? They would. They're not going to separate those because everybody's got a publisher that they put on their self-publishing thing. Um, but I just really am curious. What are you looking up? Sp- well, the top I'm trying to book look or? up the like the top. Uh, self pub books, but they they don't. I don't think they track that. No, um, no, you can't just look for that. Uh, no, and um, and everybody's you know you can just put a publishing company down in the the self pub area. Yeah, mine is usually uh, Red Wombat Studio. Yeah. Um, if I go to the Kindle store, it's uh, the most sold fiction is. Uh, Dolly Parton and James Patterson. Oh my god, yeah. I, I'm very curious about that book. Like, the, Yeah, uh, Run, Rose, Run, uh, Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo. Uh, is that porn? Uh, is that what? Porn. No, no, it's a... Uh, 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 I want to say it's... Well, here, I, I can click it and find out. Um... Margaret Atwood is the first. Uh, uh, Oh, yeah, here we go. Um, This week, the most read books are Margaret Atwood's My Evil Mother, Where the Crawdads Sing, 157 Weeks on the List, How to Catch the Easter Bunny, Bridgerton, uh, Verity by Colleen Hoover, Bridgerton, Dolly Parton, James Patterson, Bridgerton, uh, seven husbands of Evelyn Hugo. Let's see. That's uh, uh oh, I thought you said seven it? husbands, the devil, and Hugo. And I'm thinking that oh, sounds like no. porn. Oh, I'm yeah, write that. I'm writing that down. Seven husbands, Ew. the devil, and Hugo. It ends with us, which uh, is literature and fiction. Um, or uh. It's a bold and deeply personal, heart-wrenching story that breaks exciting new ground. Wow, that sounds Um, awful. I don't want to read that. That sounds depressing. (laughs) Yes. uh, Nana Loves You More, Bridgerton, It's Not Easy Being a Bunny, Reminders of Him, The Lincoln Highway, Flame and Fortune, uh, What Happened to the Bennets, uh, Lucy Fo... uh, Yeah. Beauty and the Baller, also not porn. Really? Yeah, that's, uh, I think it's a football romance novel. Um, oh. Yeah, so... Hmm. None of, knowing that those things sell does me no good, because, you know, yeah. I'm not going to write a Bridgerton book. Um, yeah. And I am not Dolly Parton, and... Uh, I'm probably not going to write a deeply personal, heart-wrenching novel, or if I do, it will be by accident. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so, like, talking about what sells really just, it almost feels like just complaining about what you didn't get for Christmas. It's like, nobody wants to hear it, and nobody can do anything about it, and... Yeah, it... it no, so no, the answer to the question, should writers try to write to the market? No. Uh, good luck with that yeah. is basically my my answer. But if you want to mishear titles and then write a story based on that new title, <laughs> gold. I am, I'm calling it now. It's gold. I'll let you know how much gold I make from Seven Husbands, The Devil, and Hugo. I, uh, I look forward to it. Uh, we do have some talk about uh, hot books in the chat. We got uh, uh, Kit Falbo, Legends and Lattes, currently... Um... Oh, for for good selling books, I see. Got a big boost from a Shauna McGuire tweet and had some big indie support from the likes of Will Wright. Yes, I saw, I heard about it before it, um, before it went live in February, I think, and I bought it. I haven't read it yet, but that's 
most. I, I know I saw the books. cover go by and thought that looks cute. Yes, uh, it looks very cute. Yeah. Um, let's see. Most of, most of the books are really popular on TikTok right now. It ends with us and Evelyn Hugo in particular. He Who Fights Monsters is the notable Royal Road transfer in the top 25. Thank you, Kit, for all this information. Yeah. Um, Patreon serial model is also a separate thing that is big for people who can get that set up. Um, yeah, but they, they, you can't track that because it, you can't track that against other books. Yeah. So it, but, it, or, I, I guess yeah. if you do know what's hot and you want to write, but I think people are really following you for you in that point. So they're yeah. going to look at whatever you write. They may not like everything, but... A uh, uh, book, just um, uh, Tim Sussman um, wrote a uh, really good uh, private investigator, uh, there's their uh, sort of urban fantasy, and um, the name of which I am trying to remember now, uh, but did it as a serial on his Patreon first, uh, which is great. But uh, I think oh, "Unfinished Business" is the uh, title, okay. and uh, it's 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 a, a fun book. I enjoyed it a lot. Um, but yeah, yeah, he wrote it as a serial on his Patreon first, and then a small press is publishing it. I know the small press in question; they sent it to me for a blurb. Uh, I think you just you can only pre-order now, but it's worth it. But uh, yeah, so that does work. But I can't tell you. Uh, necessarily how what that means in terms of what is selling that is a totally like different business model yeah and uh unless i went and subscribed to like all the patreons doing that and being like okay 10 of them are doing urban fantasy and 50 of them are doing regency romance and one of them is doing uh world war ii grim dark alternate history then Right. Yeah. So, shapeshifter erotica. It's gonna come back around, just like Alice's restaurant. Did it? Did it fall out of, of favor? I can't remember. I don't know. I know. Uh, uh, I have, uh, I have one uh, one person who usually uh, hangs out in chat who writes. Uh, I think werewolf urban fantasy, but I don't I haven't seen her pop up. Um, also, she's on the West Coast, and I know that, that Ditch Diggers is not really time to be friendly to the West Coast, so I'm sorry about that, you guys. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, if you, but also for me, it's like, if, I don't, I can't force myself to write a genre I don't like. I can't. Yeah. It's like people say, oh, well, I should just write a romance. It's easy money. Okay, one, romances do sell. Number two, they're not that easy to write. And if you could just do it, then shut up and do it. Prove, yeah. prove everybody wrong that they're, they're, they're hard to write and only idiots buy them. Because yeah. you'll be very wrong. I do know somebody who is good at writing romances who uh, she did tell me that she was a little dismayed, but she learned that her audience wanted quantity over quality. So if she dropped her quality and wrote faster, or rather, probably did fewer edits or something, um, and, you know, put out books that often, then she would do better. Oh, sh hey, Shale! Shale is here! Yay! I was just wondering if you had any comments on shapeshifting, erotica, or uh, urban fantasy. Uh, um, the market shift thereof. Yes. Um, and if not, we're still delighted to have you here. Um no, but yeah, and, and there are genres that I could be like, oh, okay, if that is selling, uh, I always, w maybe it is time to uh, dust off that half-finished Regency I have and send it to my agent. Like, that's about as close as I can imagine going if yeah. you had something that was already a thing. Uh, but not, and... not everybody is like you. Not everybody has, like, ten to 20,000 words of a half, not even half, but just, like, a, a, ha a little book bit of a baked little bit baked pie just sitting around it's like oh you want this kind of book sure here you go that's true yeah it uh it works well for me i i know it doesn't work for everybody but uh yeah 
Yeah. I mean, the problem I have too is that uh, when I uh, and I I know this isn't unique to me. If I have a deadline for something and I have to write something, I immediately would rather do anything else on Earth. Yep. So uh, it's. Uh, it's sometimes easier to start the books and get excited about them before uh, I need to, before someone wants them. Because as soon as somebody wants them, I'm like, okay, but I could go write a story about, uh, you know, I could go write a, a Western. Mm -hmm. Incidentally, Westerns are one genre that apparently that mostly does not sell. And having said that, Look heard, for the boom to come immediately. I heard they're coming back. They'd have to be because uh, I have uh, I actually had a book uh, that I sold that they were like, can we change this a bit? Because what, if it looks like a Western, it's going to be described as a Western, and Westerns do not sell for crap. Okay. That was two years ago. You know, tomorrow, Westerns may be the new hotness. Yeah. I'm, I'm sorry, Shell did say something, but are you you're responding to the... the werewolf thing or the western thing because it came up right as we were talking about westerns uh she says it's niche at the moment with a hardcore readership but expected to grow again i don't know if you're talking about the werewolf or the or the western or werewolf good. rest or what can't say it werewolf, werewolf western. westerns now now we're there that's gold also gold just like seven husbands and the devil and hugo yeah uh I'm pretty sure that's uh, that was uh, probably about the shapeshifters, which yeah, was probably. big and then was small, and now and but yeah, you still have a hardcore audience, so uh, absolutely. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I don't know the the if you write faster, you can put out more books is absolutely true. I think it depends on however on how you are as a writer. Like if you're a writer who writes at X speed but produces fairly clean first drafts you can't really write faster to the market yeah if you're a writer who like writes a a draft zero and then reworks it and then reworks it and then reworks it okay cut a reworking and uh see where you get but uh i couldn't necessarily write faster uh like unless you had a cattle prod yeah uh, Noble Hunter in chat says, uh, and welcome, first time chat, where would read a well, I can't, <laughs> did you do this on purpose? You did it on purpose, didn't you, Noble Hunter? Is it yes. werewolf western? No, it's would read a werewolf western. I think, ah. I think actors say that to warm up. <laughs> would read a werewolf western. I know and I've seen fanfic about it. Okay, so we got one reader for the werewolf western. Um, uh, Shale says, right now, both Urban Fantasy and Shapeshifter Erotica are leaning towards more mashups. I've got several weird westerns in there, as they're called, in my to-be-read pile. Yes, weird west. that's right, thank you, because yeah. I remember it wasn't just straight, what, Louis L'Amour things, it's, it had to be weird, weirdness. Yes, I remember that. Honestly, one of my favorite books ever as a kid was a Louis L'Amour novel that I picked up at, of all things, the at a grocery store on a on a long car ride kind of thing, and uh, it was called The Haunted Mesa, and it is a weird western in so much as uh, it is certainly the weirdest thing that L'Amour ever wrote, and it's uh, like. The, it, it's set in, you know, I think Arizona and Canyon country, and then they wind up uh, traveling between worlds into this weird twisted up version that is actually the Mayan underworld of Zolbalba. And they're in this maze full of like mirrors and panels and things. And there are Sasquatch. And I'm like, obviously, you know, I was 10. I was like, this is possibly the greatest thing I've ever seen. <laughs> I would later attempt to read more Louis L'Amour to recapture that and discover that apparently that was the I'm Louis L'Amour, I can write whatever the fuck I want now book, and there was nothing else like it. So, wow. So basically, he's, yeah. he tripped one time. I mean, he did, he did one LSD, he wrote a book in like three days, doesn't it, remember anything it, about it. It was, I mean, and now if I reread it, I'm like, which I have not done, and... I don't and, recommend it. Have the have the happy memory. 
I mean, there's so many things that I'm sure are terribly wrong about it, but it had some really cool stuff. Like, uh, uh, the, uh, the bad guy, the, 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 the opening between the worlds is shaky and, uh, the bad guy trying to get out at the end is trapped in solid stone as he's trying to, so he's like halfway out and then, yeah. And also Sasquatch. So, and yeah. also Sas yeah. And like there were, oh, and there were Komodo dragons for no apparent reason in the, uh, in the desert. Okie dokie. Fascinating. Yeah. Loved it. <laughs> we got, uh, it's been, re Christian Writing says it's been re-released re in a special edition with bonus materials as part of the Louis L'Amour's Lost Treasures collection. Oh, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm going right now. <laughs> And thank you, Kit. I, I yeah, that would be the Stephen it. King method. The the trip balls, write a book, and forget about it entirely. Uh, and thank you, Jasmine, for twelve months subscribed. Thank you very much. Really appreciate the the support. Um, so we're getting close to our time. Uh, if anybody in chat wants to ask questions about the market, uh, please let us know. If you would like to ask questions, um, and you're listening to this later. Uh, mightymer at gmail.com is how you get in touch with me and just put ditch diggers in the subject line because usually I assume it's for my other podcast if you don't. So, um, yeah, if you have any questions or comments about the market, would love to hear them. Um, as long as it's not what what is selling right now because as we've made clear, we, we don't have no know. But now, it's, I, now I have to figure out what Seven Husbands and the Devil and Hugo are going to be about. Um, I'm thinking either multiverse or porn or multiverse porn. Uh, does it does it have to be porn? I just keep thinking the devil and Miss Daisy. That's all. Oh, okay, yeah, that was no, Daisy. That was, that was driving Miss Daisy. What was the devil in? Uh, the devil and Miss. I have the internet. Hang on. Yeah, I don't. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, speaking of. Devil and Miss Jones. Jones! Devil and Miss Jones, thank you. No, Daniel Webster was something else. I'm talking about porn, guys. Okay, keep up. Um, it's terrible, by the way. Uh, it's, uh, speaking of weird, I watched Everything Everywhere all at once yesterday. And, um, it is by far the weirdest fucking thing I've ever seen. And it was great. And, you know, I, I expected greatness from Michelle Yeoh, because she's Michelle Yeoh. You always expect greatness from her. But I did not know Jamie Lee Curtis was in it. And she's also amazing. And just Jamie Lee Curtis as an antagonist, sort of. Yeah, she's an antagonist uh, against Michelle Yeoh was and he, this is not like if you know anything about it, it's a multiverse story so the the main character is not the Michelle Yeoh of uh she's not a kung fu movie star so you know her trying to be awkward and fight with Jamie Lee Curtis who is also much wearing things that show that she is not uh kept as fit as the woman actually has so it's it's just amazing it and weird it's so fucking weird every time i thought it was weird enough no it got weirder and it got weirder and it had tender moments and i cried a little bit but it was still the weirdest fucking thing i've ever seen i gotta say it just everyone else was laughing and i'm like i would laugh but i am in too much shock that this is so weird <laughs> Yeah, the uh, the closest equivalent I have to that is Donnie Darko. Mm. So. Yeah, and the thing is, I can't. I I, I don't want to talk about it because I don't want to spoil anybody. Yeah, yeah. Don't tell me anything. I won't tell I, you I, anything. I won't tell yeah. you. Anything. It's just really weird. I'm excited. Um, so yes, you and Matt usually have like specific things you you ask each other, and I feel like I'm falling down on the stunt Matt job because I can't remember any of them. Um. Not really. We asked, like, what's what's going on? What are we up to? Um, I think. and But, I mean, it's been so long since we've done the show on any sort of regular format that... Uh, what are you working on? 
Let me do that. What am I working on? I am working on um, book two of the Midsolar Murders. The uh, tentative title is A Swarm of Cuckoos, and I need to talk to you about that. Um, about cuckoos in particular, or? Uh... No, swarms of cuckoos. Oh, okay. And um, the insect cuckoos. Oh, the cuckoo bee. Yes. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. So, um, but yeah, I've, I'm about thirty three or four thousand words into that, and I'm. I still have a couple of weird, like, how did this happen, and why did this happen, and I better figure it out as I write. Hesitancies. So. But I still, I do feel like I've hit my stride, and I know my characters, and um, I think, I think my biggest problem now, I've made some really big, you know, it's a story, things are gonna go wrong, but I've made some really big things go wrong beyond the actual murder that's supposed to be investigated, and I can't forget that it's a murder mystery, and that's really the goal is to figure out who killed Oscar. So, yeah. gotcha. So yeah, it's um. But, you know, I had, a, like, a 2,500-word day yesterday. I'm feeling good today. I'm going to be writing after this. I'm hopefully going to get some good words down then, too. What about you? Uh, I am still working on this retelling of The Goose Girl. And uh, this book has really kicked my ass. Uh, I'm at 60,000 words now, and I didn't expect it would be this long. And I can't shake the feeling that, like, it's 60,000 words and nothing has happened because it is actually sort of a regency. People are like standing around and talking a lot. Mm. And I'm like, is this just 60,000 words of people standing around talking? Are, are people going to be horribly bored? Yes. I have at least one murder, Okay, but good. there's like a, a bunch of just people discussing things. And I'm like, this is going to be slow. This is going to be boring. People are going to hate it. Uh, <laughs> I will have to change my name and become a medical test subject. So, yeah. Or, you know, you could just become the next Aaron Sorkin. Uh, uh what did, wait, he wrote like the West Wing, yes. right? Lots of people standing around talking in that. Or walking, walking through wall, uh, through hallways and talking. I finally introduced a ghost. Uh, I was like, right around, you know, the 60,000 word mark. I was like, this needs a ghost. <laughs> That'll pull. That, that'll. Well, I mean, it's not the first one was murdered, so that works. But well, that's uh, good. you had a you had a murder there right there. Just you know, ghost free ghost for the taking. Exactly, and and the end goal is the sort of batshit horror. Things have gone really bad. The dead horse has dug itself out of the ground and is wandering the gardens without a head, and you know, uh, thing, but. There's all this talking before we get there, and yeah, I don't know. That's why editors exist. I'll hand it in, and yeah. I'll be like, "There's way too much talking here. Cut these scenes." And I'll be like, "Yes, man." Well, we got we got some talk in the chat that does not sound boring. Um, the kids are asleep. Suggest the horrible goose girl. Oh, it's a horrible goose. Uh, oh, oh, this uh, uh, this is the uh, uh, Falada is is one of the bad guys, and. Uh, uh, so uh, the 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 good guys cut the head off, and it doesn't stop him. Mm. Yes, the original fairy tale has a, a beheaded horse that is, uh, uh, and they hang the skull on an arch that so the heroine has to pass it every day, and the skull talks to her. And fairy tales are messed up, but I always like to find ways I can make them even more messed up. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. 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 So, hey, it looks like it's been an hour. It does. Um, I have taken an hour of your time. You've sat in the sun, and I have floated here in the void. Um, I mean, it's dappled shade. It dappled shade. <laughs> if I was a hosta, I would be fine with this. Oh, God. It's and dappled shade. A hosta, and there, and there's a hosta. Yes, so. And the hosta is fine, it looks like. Yes, yes. Uh, this is when uh, I, I went to this nursery, right? Okay, I tried to go to the one really good nursery, and then they were closed on a Tuesday, and who the hell is closed on a Tuesday? I don't know. But I was with a friend of mine from out of town. We're like, we were going to a nursery, damn it. So we started Googling nearby nurseries, 
And we wound up in Angier, uh, which is a weird ass town in North Carolina and went to a huge nursery, but, and they were like, hostas. Yeah, we have some of those go on that track around the barn up the hillside. It's under the pine trees. And so we walk for a good distance. Uh, and finally at the, we find a hillside with pine trees and hostas, but there are rows and rows of very healthy hostas and not one of them has a label on them. Like, and there's thousands of cultivars of hostas. So no idea what you're getting. And we looked at them and I was like, obviously I am the sort of person who will buy a random mystery hosta. Of course you are. Because, you know, first of all, I walked a long damn way and I want something to show for it. And secondly, it could be anything. So yeah, that's my mystery hosta. All right. Mystery hosta. Now that's the book you should write. The mystery hosta. Mystery uh, hosta. The case of the mystery hosta. The devil in mystery hosta. I do have the uh, the the cozy who done it uh, where the angel and the devil uh, are gardeners who solve crimes and I really got to finish that because I love it but first I have to finish this this headless. You think you're gonna sport. send that to anybody or is that a self pub thing? I haven't decided yet. Uh, I should probably send it to somebody. Uh, I I really like it. And when I really like something, I almost kind of want to like keep it to myself so that I can do the, the, whatever the hell I want with it. But at the same time, I really like money. Yep. So, uh, yeah, that's always the, the, the difficulty. Yeah. We have a hosta roulette. The hosta will probably strangle people with its roots and then eat them from Noble Hunter. Um, the hosta hostel from Alexander. Uh, the hosta hosta. Ho- hostel. Hostel. Shape shifting hostile romance. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Helena Handbag says, I feel Ursula here. I hate sharing, but I love money. <laughs> yeah. Dappled shade is when you are subtly insulting someone while also opening complimenting them. Openly complimenting them. That would be. Well, um, I guess we are done here. Ursula, you want to plug your stuff? Uh, yes, uh, Nettle and Bone, a fantasy that, frankly, even I think this one is good. Uh, it is. I've read it. By T. Kingfisher. Um, oh, you read it? Oh, yeah. humor. Uh, is uh, coming out on the 26th, so you can pre-order it now, and uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's cool. It has a demonic chicken and uh, other stuff, and uh what moves the dead a horror novella coming out in july also by t king fisher and i have just written a bunch of other books in general that are currently out that you can go buy at any time um yeah yes and uh i am mer lafferty and my books are available where fine books are found uh most recent original book was six wakes when i think about how long ago that came out i feel really bad but my newest one is station eternity and it's coming out this october and you can pre-order it now it is and you a, should, because uh, it's great i'm sorry and you should because it's great thank you um it is uh essentially murder she wrote on babylon 5 and um i'm very proud of it Scaring me really badly because I haven't put an original book out in a while, but uh, there we go. And also, if you like Star Wars, I wrote the solo novelization and got to add some really fun scenes. And if you like Minecraft or your kids like Minecraft, I have one of those too. Um, And my other podcast is I Should Be Writing, and it streams twice a week on Tuesday, Thursday, 3 p.m., and or you can uh, subscribe to the podcast feed, or you can support at Patreon and get all my crap. Uh, should probably come with a better marketing term than that, but uh, patreon.com slash mighty mer, twitch.tv slash mighty mer, and I think that's all my stuff. Thank you for pre-ordering, Jasmine. That's awesome. Thank you, Helena Handbag. Thank you, everybody in chat, for keeping us company, and thank you for listening whenever you're listening to this, because uh, you keep this going. I'm very glad that Ursula's helping me keep Ditch Diggers alive. I'll be back next week with Matt. And, um, yeah, that's about it for the show. You can support us at patreon.com slash mightymurr. Theme song by Devo Spice, devospice.com.